Dunedin Fine Arts Center and um, so far we've done two-part bottles and we've done um, a form that looks a lot like a vase to kind of set us up for reserving the right amount of clay you need to make that tall skinny neck. So tonight I did a demonstration of how to take that uh, project from last week which looks more like a vase and turn it into a closed form or a tall skinny neck bottle. So um, I'm just going to get going here. I've centered the clay and uh, I open it with my hand on top like that and then I try to leave about a half an inch of clay in the bottom so I have enough clay to trim a nice deep foot ring on the bottom. All right, so once I get the depth that I want, I'm going to put my hand on the side here and scrape the clay up against the hand and what this does is it it keeps this clay from the outside moving out as I'm making the bottom. So here's what that looks like. All right, and then once we have it as wide as we want it, we are going to compress the bottom. One of the questions was, do we make a bottom that is rounded on the inside, or do we go for a square corner? I go for a square corner, which eventually turns into a rounded corner. Okay, I want to get as much clay up as possible. That enables me to do that. Um, the exception to that would be if I were throwing a, a bowl or shallow bowl and I'm opening it, I want to open it with a nice, nice gentle uh, raise to the foot from the center to the outside. And that's so that it's easier to push that wall down and, and go into that same curve. All right, so the next thing we talked about is Recentering this wall of clay once you open it sometimes uh, Even though it feels centered when you open this up It'll start moving around even if it's not moving. I do this every time I'm going to pinch a little bit of clay from the bottom and Using this whole finger I'm going to pinch and allow pressure here. I'm going to recenter This ring of clay so pinch at the base and I'm trying to then reincorporate all that clay right into the side and then you can see this finger here on the top is compressing that clay as I'm bringing it up. Main goal is to try to get the whole wall about this it's a more than a half an inch but the same thickness from bottom to top there's still a little bit of clay down there um, so what I do is I'll undercut this if you look at the side, you can see that's pretty yep. undercut. And then I take my fingers like this. I'm going to put a sponge between my fingers and the clay. I'm just going to push that into the wall and redistribute that. And what that does is it, it does make this wall a little more uniform. And it's good to do the centering part first so that this that just doesn't throw it all out of center when I do that. So I've just redistributed the clay that's right down here into the wall. Now I'm ready for my first pole, and if you look at this, it looks pretty straight up and down, but mm -hmm. it's flaring just a little bit, so I always want this to be coned a little bit more at the top. Okay, so that was another question we had. All right, so undercut at the base here, so if you look at the side, you can see I then put my thumb in there, and see, notice the angle of the thumb. It's actually pushing clay into the cylinder. So it's more angled. Alright, so you can see it, it's a little bulbous there at the bottom. So I'm going to push that back in. Control my top, and then I'm going to go for the second pull, which again will, for me, is a thumb pull. Put just a little bit of water on the top and just trace it down rather than squeezing a whole bunch of water in there. Alright, so it's nice and slippery on the inside. 
create a groove at the bottom, stick my thumb in the groove, and I'm going to try to move that clay up. And I'll get about maybe three or maybe even four inches from the top and then it's going to start fighting me. Instead of fighting the clay right there, I'm going to release, collar this in, and then finish that pull right where I left off. Just right about there. Okay, so now we've got a, you know, whether it takes you three or four pulls, you pull until you've got a pretty uniform cylinder, and then I take my square rib, and I'm going to take off this little bit of apron here on the clay that's always at the bottom. Okay, so I've removed that much clay, which would normally be trimmed away later. And I'm going to make sure the inside is slippery. And I'm going to compress this wall to make it straighter and stronger. So I've got my fingers on the inside pushing up against the rib. Notice the rib is not moving, just the fingers on the inside. And then when I get to the top, I tilt this bottom part out away from the pot and then continue to the top. All right, now at this point, remember, we are designating about this much of the piece for the neck, or if you're making a base, the top of the base. So if you want to, if it helps you, just make a small little mark right there. So now all the shaping is gonna happen right below that. So now I'm, it's at this point, I'm going to start using a little bit of heat, and it's not necessary but I like to use it because it adds a little bit more strength and stability to the base here if I heat this up. And all I want is, if you use a heat gun or a flame, it's too much heat. So I use a hair dryer, and I just point it down to the bottom, and I just start working as if that's not there. I'm going to give it a little bit of shape. And the strongest line is a straight line. So go right up to that line. What I mean by that strongest line is a straight line, as I'm pushing this out at the bottom, I try to keep that lower portion nice and straight, and later I can come in with a rib from the inside and push that out and give it more curve, but right now I want it to be fairly straight. A little dry on the inside. Okay, so notice I'm not going past that line. I'm going to use my flexible rib and I'm going to give it a, even a little more shape bending this rib like so and then I'm pushing the clay out to the rib. So this week we're just going to go with a gentle shape. And next week I'll show you how to push it into a more exaggerated form. Alright, so right now I'm just trying to get rid of any kind of markings. Now I'm going to push it with this rib from the inside. The other thing I mentioned is um, at this point, because it's rounded on the inside, you can now go in and if you look at the inside, there's a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. We're going to take that out as soon as possible. So because it's opened up, it's a lot easier to get your hand in there without distorting the side. And if you want to, you can spend a little time flattening the bottom. There we 
go. Now I'm going to take this rib on the inside. I'm going to put that in the bottom corner and then push it out and then create the form. So if you look at the side, you'll be able to see how that is changing the form. Still, the air is pointed right towards the bottom. start wobbling a little bit but we can take care of that later. Now what I did there is for the first shaping I had the, the point down and then I'm going to lift the shoulder so I take the fat part in and push out and lift up. So first tail down Going into the widest part with this fat part of the rib, and I'm going to lift it up and, and bring it to the top part. Alright, so that's pretty good. Inside shape is good. I might push the inside just a little bit more. On the bottom? Yeah, towards the bottom. Alright. So, I also try to get people to think of your bottle as two bowls sitting rim to rim. So there's this bowl and that bowl. As soon as you get the bowl, the shape you want, it will dry it with a uh, torch. The bottom one looks pretty good, but the top one needs a little fine tuning. Alright, so that's pretty good. Now I'm going to dry these two bowls and get them nice and stable. And then I can start working on the top. If I didn't do that and I start working on the top and the shoulder is too soft, it's going to start slumping and bending. So we really want this pretty dry as well as this part. Now this has been drying already. So that's dry, but you can still push it around. I would dry it a little bit more if it were for throwing this alone. All right, so now what I want to do is, in order to get this base flare out of here, I need to tip this in at the top. Tip it in at the top, and I'm just pushing this with my thumb. I'm not trying to make it thin, I'm just trying to push it in, and that creates a flat top. Now when I try to collar this, it'll collar much easier, and it'll stand that up. All right, and we talked about in my class, this part right here is a part that's gonna get weak really fast, so I'm gonna pull over that, Press it with a metal rib. And if 
you can't get your fingers in there, this is when a throwing rib or throwing stick comes in handy. You're going to just put the stick in there, put the rib on the surface the way you want it, and push the clay up to the rib. seconds you should be drying this before you move on. Alright, so I'm going to move on and you're going to repeat that, folding the top in. Okay, so it's flat and then you can color this part in. You see how much thicker that is? This is where you get all your clay, as soon as you start coloring. Alright, so I'm going to go down as deep as I can. And continue to pull. I'm just pulling that in. To the shape. So again, that can be trimmed a little bit better. You just want to dry this as you go. Now I'm going to pull this straight up and then color it one last time and just finish the shape. Alright, so a couple ways you can do this. I find it really much easier if I just stick my finger in here and pull the clay up over my finger. Okay, so that gives me a fairly nice cylinder and then I'm going to stick my finger back in again. If I had done a better job, I would already have my needle tool right here. As soon as it gets a little uneven at the top, just trim that off. Alright, so now we're going to use our brush and brush on some slip right where we're working. And we're going to squeeze this in. And we're going to do the squeeze and lift. So I'm going to speed up the wheel. So you're squeezing in, turning your hands up, and lifting up. Other people uh, during the evening were saying they don't really want a small neck, so you could really be done with it at, at this point, but you do want to straighten out the neck. So we're going to put the stick in and push the stick up against my thumb and then my other fingers are just stabilizing the neck. So that's what this looks like here. I want some slip on there. Now the stick is pushing up against my thumb and I'm taking the thumb up very slowly. This is where, if you wanted to flare this, you would flare it or give it some shape. We're just going to go with a straight neck. So I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. Okay, 
So we could leave it just like that, but I want to give it a little more shape. So put some slip on here. And I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and squeeze that in, and then I'm gonna stabilize it with my index finger. So I'm going to be done right there. I'm just going to take this little bump out of here. Whenever you're doing anything at the base, you have to steady the top. Remember, a lot of this can be trimmed away. I just want to push it into the general shape. Okay, so the last thing we do is we want to stabilize the neck. We're going to hold the top. We're going to dry the base first until it turns white. And then we're going to sneak up on the rest of the neck. And I will come in here later and fine tune this. The reason I'm drying the neck as much as I am is if I don't do this, air currents will cause it to tip over one way or the other. So this stabilizes it, so it stay nice and tall. Okay, so the very last thing is I'm going to trim away this extra clay at the bottom. So I remember right now where the extra clay is, there should be a bump here. So this hair dryer helps to blow the crumbs away as I'm trimming. And this helps me get a better idea of the actual shape that I have here. Remember, I've got to come in and trim that uh, foot just a little bit more. And I'll show you that in another video. Alright, so I'll have another video about trimming. And uh, this is just basically the form. And I'll come back in here, turn it upside down, and, and fine-tune that form. I'll uh, finish off the top and uh, shave off the, a little bit of the neck and cinch that in a little bit more and refine the form and the trimming. So, if you don't see the other trimming video, we will see you uh, Friday night, uh, not Friday night, Monday night. I'll be there at 5 o'clock, but between 5 and 6. Um, you can catch up with what you did last week, and uh, the demonstration will start at 6 o'clock, and then we'll go till 9. And it's your bonus class. It is my bonus class, so if you can't make it, 